uh, currently I'm in a huge state of paranoia um, just due to my past and just the things and the people I've associated myself with previously. There are few artists who have left a legacy as polarizing and unique as the late XXX Tentacion. This man had a depth to his artistry that is still unparalleled to much of his peers, regardless of what you think of the man himself. Whether you loved his music for the infectious melodies, slick wordplay, or overwhelming aggression, or maybe you were just a fan of the way X was vulnerable about his multitude of mental health struggles, there's an endless amount of reasons why X is still so adored by many of his fans. In the new Hulu documentary titled Look At Me, we got quite a raw insight into the life story of XXX Tentacion. From his rough upbringing to how he cultivated his musical persona, and more notably the shocking details regarding his mental health and the allegations of domestic violence and abuse. Between the harrowing accounts from the women in X's life and shocking insight provided from those closest to him, this documentary truly gives viewers some shocking revelations that can be difficult to hear about, so trigger warning in advance, but we're going to break down the most shocking moments from the documentary, look at me. <laughs> As it should be no surprise to X fans or anybody that has ever listened to a handful of his songs, XXX Tentacion has very serious struggles with mental health. X's battle with mental health was something he openly discussed with his mother. At the age of 16, he revealed to her that he heard voices in his head. His mother said the troubles he was facing were truly emotional and revolved around the need to be understood. This is a person who was looking for love and dealing with some really raw early life experiences. In the documentary, it is revealed that X was diagnosed with bipolar disorder at age 13. Cleo further explains that she chose not to medicate Ja for his condition as she stated she doesn't believe in giving kids drugs and that isn't how they tackle that problem in her culture. Instead, she states that counseling and getting to the root of the problem was how she preferred to handle that and she also listed weed and mushroom tea as other potential remedies but not actual pharmaceuticals. Another one of the shocking revelations that also came from the documentary was just how dysfunctional X's upbringing was. As stated by one of his closest friends, Ski Mask the Slump God, whom he met in a juvenile detention center, the reason X was even in there in the first place was for committing robberies and home invasions as a child. You know that little voice in your head that says, don't do that? I don't think just I had that. X and Ski Mask's friendship was built off of them meeting each other in Juvie, a friendship that would continue outside that institution, and they released many songs together. Ski Mask said that X was so loathed by his family that the first time he met Cleo, X's mother, she asked him, why are you hanging out with him? He's a bad kid. This family dynamic was so intense to the point where X would even opt to be homeless and find somewhere on the streets to sleep or a different friend's house than stay with his families who labeled him as a bad kid. I also need to make this distinction that X was never kicked out or told not to come home. This was all his choice. His mother stated, when he left home, he left home. Nobody kicked him out. It was a result of him not wanting to follow the rules or follow curfew or just doing whatever he wanted to do. This vicious cycle would repeat and X would get suspended or expelled from so many different schools until he was straight up no longer enrolled and stopped going altogether. As a child, X didn't view himself as a bad person or a bad kid, says Ski Mask, at least not at first. But the way that X's family and basically any stranger thought of him at the time, i.e. a bad person, it truly started to rub off on the kid as it started to affect the way that he viewed himself. Because the way that Ski Mask paraphrased it, X's mentality was, I'm just being me, and people hate me. And I hate myself because people hate me, so I need to change myself. I find this quote to be especially harrowing because this man really was on the brink of trying to change himself and his life and the way that he treated people when he passed around 2018. So, you can say what you want about him, but this man was making an attempt to change himself, it's just, we never really got to see that come to fruition. One of the most shocking moments and sequences in the entire documentary comes around the 32 minute mark where Geneva and Nyla, Jaws' ex-girlfriend, is being introduced and how their relationship started. When Jossie and I first met, I had cuts on my thigh, like five lines, and under that I had the word that said alone. And when he noticed it, he was like, why'd you do that? And I was like, because I felt alone. He was like, oh, me too. Geneva was an extremely troubled youth with a difficult upbringing as well. X and Geneva more or less trauma bonded over their problems as they found middle ground with much of their internal conflicts and struggles. The moment that truly encapsulates just how unhealthy and toxic of a relationship these two shared is when footage is shown of the couple, now it isn't clear who is who, physically cutting a heart shape into their forearms. This graphic moment is then narrated with an excerpt from X's Fader interview, speaking on their relationship where he says the following, I want you to cut a 
alone into my arm. So every time you feel as if you are alone, you think of me and you understand that you have someone that feels exactly the same. This moment was a true shocking depiction of how toxic and unhealthy a relationship can be to the extent where two people believe that self-harm is a symbol of one another's love, which let's be clear here, it's not and never will be. As difficult of a topic as self-harm is to navigate, this unfortunately was not even an example of the worst thing that took place between X and his girlfriend Geneva, as many of you probably already know except this true ugly side of their relationship was put on full display in this documentary. As the years went on, X's demons continued to manifest in uglier ways, which led to the 2016 assault of Geneva. In one of the film's most harrowing scenes, a friend of Geneva and X's recalls hearing the rapper drowning her in their bathroom tub. She was a shell of a human, the friend recalls of Geneva around that time period. Now probably just as harrowing was Geneva's account of how exactly she escaped where she was being held, which she describes going to look for something in the fridge and quietly escaping while using that as a distraction. She thinks I'm gonna kill her, X said of Geneva in a secretly recorded 2016 conversation. In early October of that year, Geneva showed up at a South Florida police station, badly battered, claiming X had physically assaulted her. He was promptly arrested on charges of false imprisonment, witness tampering, and aggravated battery. Geneva said that she was pregnant with his child at the time. The film also features home footage of a celebration of his release from jail, at which he accepts love offered by family and management, said like do the right thing, one day at a time, and after which he flat out lies about his abusive actions. She was bruised already, he says of Geneva. Now what occurred between X and Geneva is something that has been well documented if there are further details you wish to view, but in regards to their relationship and the allegations, I mean this documentary release is damning to say the least. So hopefully Geneva is now able to be at peace. Well there you have it ladies and gentlemen, these were the most shocking moments from the Look At Me documentary. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And before I head out, I will say two things. One, this is a video where I am truly only the messenger. And if there's any insight that I personally have to offer after breaking this whole thing down, it's that your mental health is a precious thing. So I urge anybody viewing this to always cherish, protect, and do your best to improve it. Sorry if this was a cheesy ending, but I just kind of had to say it. My name's Clyde Smith and I'll see you guys in another video.